All right. This is how to run command prompt in the login screen on Windows 7. You can use this to install applications, create an administrator account using command prompt, all that good stuff. I want to keep this short. My last attempt at this video failed because when I tried to render it, the formats were in incompatible and yeah, it screwed up. And I was breathing down the microphone and all you could hear was me breathing, it was horrible. So anyway. The first thing you'll need for this um, is a flash drive which has more than one gigabyte of total space, of capacity. Now, if you have any files on it, I suggest you back them up because you're going to format it and all the files on there will be lost. So, yes, if you have any important files, back them up on Back them up now because they're going to be lost. First thing you'll need for this tutorial, for this little hack, is Hiram's Bootsy. Alright, pretty sure we can just go straight here and go to the download page. And yep, right down the bottom, here's the download. Download that zip file, and you're good to go. Next thing you've got to do is download Rufus. Now, this is hard to find on Google. It's like 1.4.3. Point, point something. Point, I think it's 385. Yep. And you've got to download this, and you can just click on author's site, and then click. You don't even have to do that there. It's down. It asking you to download. So there you go. So you need those two program, those two files. Okay. The first thing you've got to do is locate your Hiram's. boot CD zip file and all you want from this zip file is this ISO file which is 600 megabytes so just open up an explorer and you want to extract it I have already extracted mine to the C drive once you've extracted yours you want to go down and locate Rufus and open that up now everything here can be left on default except for this change that to ISO image and you locate your Hiram's boot CD ISO and you're done but make sure you are writing to your flash drive as you can see the flash drive I want to write to is EFD so that is what I want to set it to and now, once you've done that, it will format your drive. As you can see in this tooltip, all the data that was already on there will be destroyed. So just be warned. Now click Start. And it goes ahead and warns you, just in case you happen to not listen to me. Just click OK, and it shall start. I'll go ahead and pause the video and I'll meet you on the other side. Alright, you can see it's done. File on the status file, you can see done. And it took 2 minutes and 37 seconds. Alright, so now you can close this. And the files are here on your new flash drive, it's been renamed. Hiram's Boot CD 15.2. Alright, so now you're ready to unplug it and now I'll plug it into the computer you want to hack so if you're at home right now and you're gonna hack the school computer well you're obviously gonna have to wait until you get to school plug it in but for now I'll just watch this video because I'm gonna show you what to do next
All right, so now that you've completed creating your Hiren's Boot CD, or well, it's actually a USB flash drive, Hiren's Boot CD flash drive, which is bootable, you now have to go over to your school computer. In this case, I'm just going to use my old Toshiba laptop, which is running Windows 7, and just plug it into the USB socket while it's still off. As soon as you turn it on, you must be tapping away at the F12 key to bring up the boot menu. So here we go. Done. Alright. From here, we must select USB and then we're in the Hiron's boot menu we're in the boot CD menu and from here we must select mini Windows XP and just let that load up I know of videos on YouTube where people use Linux to do this step instead of Hiron's boot CD they use a lot um, a flavor of Linux, but I like to use Hiron's boot CD because it loads up Windows XP, so it's kind of intuitive for anyone who is used to the Windows format, is not very used to how Linux works, so it'll just be easier and quicker to get things done. So if you're in class, you want to do things real quick so the teacher doesn't find out that you're actually hacking the computers. So you want a familiar interface. So Windows is the best bet. So as you can see, I've loaded up Windows Explorer. That's what you want to do. You want to go onto the drive that contains the installation of Windows, which in this case is Halen. Usually it's local disk. And you browse down to Windows folder. You want to find System32. All right, System32, here we go. And now, the first thing you want to do is find cmd.exe. So just keep pressing C. There's a lot of N NLS files. There's a lot of them. So you just go over here, scroll down, just keep going down until you find cmd. So we can keep going. Here we go. cmd. Exe. So what you need to do now is window it so you can drag CMD over to the desktop. It won't move it to the desktop because it's on a separate drive. You just copy it. So what you want to do with the CMD that you've now got onto the desktop is you need to rename it to this exact file name. S-E-T-H-C so set hc <coughs> once you have completed that now you want to look for a file called set hc in windows uh, system 32 because you want to back it up before you replace it because you probably want to set it back so you don't get caught so if some random kid goes and starts fiddling with his sticky keys you'll find out that it opens up um, command prompt instead of the little window and it will probably go and report it and you might get in trouble so you, you want to replace it after you've done the hack so you back it up so you can set it up later so now you, you'll copy your command prompt which is renamed setHC back into the system32 folder now you see that where did it go with Windows XP there's a con common glitch it's not really a glitch but when you copy a new file over to a folder it seems to always appear at the bottom even when it's alphabetically sorted but here it is, there it is now you're ready to restart so you just click shut down the start menu and you shut down OK
down the computer is shut down. You have to press the on button again and let it boot normally this time. No pressing F12. No need. You just want it to boot back into Windows 7. So this will take a while. This is definitely not the fastest computer. It's a budget PC with a fairly ordinary hard drive in there. Decent processor. 3.1 gigahertz i5. Generation 2, so it's a sandy bridge. When I say 3.1 gigahertz, that's what it turbo boosts to. It sits at a minimum of 2.5 gigahertz. So it's an alright processor. Considering the computer only cost $790 back in 2012, it's a, it was a serious, serious bargain compared to all the other computers. Like, when I went to buy this computer, um, in the local stores, we got this locally as well, this old one. And in December 2013, this computer which was originally purchased for $790 still was better spec than today's $1,000 laptops in the local stores so this thing is amazing value still beats $1,000 laptops in local stores today I'm not saying all of them some of them most of the $1,000 laptops today only have 2.6 gigahertz max turbo boost i5s in them. This has 3.1, so it's great. So I've logged in. I don't know why, but if you press and open up sticky keys, you'll notice command prompt. All right, what you should have actually done was like stayed in the login screen. I was chatting on and kind of got a bit carried away. But what you want to do is be in the login screen. Alright. So don't log in. Because in the login screen you're an administrator. When you're logged in, you're limited by your account restrictions. So this computer is a slow piece of crap. Surprise, because it's the hard drive that's doing it, not the processor. All right, so you're in the login screen here. So you just hold, press shift a couple of times, and up, up comes command prompt, instead of sticky keys. They can do like everything you want, like, I'll start up task manager, task MGR, I've got task manager in the login screen, everything, you can set up administrator accounts, and the best thing is, you go, oh shit, you're in the login screen and the teacher's coming, just click the screen and everything goes away. And you can use Alt Tab to get everything back up. So just like, oh crap, teacher coming, click the login screen, everything hides. Trust me. <laughs> I've learned this from experience. So instead of, I usually, like, designating a computer basically for me at the school, and I'd have it hacked like this and I'd never ever log in I'd always just sit at login screen and use it because well I can pretty much this new task and I'm just like oh I want the web browser up so you just go browse this computer C program files things lagging out in the login screen Mozilla Firefox Firefox run 
and you can install programs and everything, create admin accounts. I'm not familiar with command prompt. It's not really fam that familiar. So, really, I can't tell you how to create an admin account. I've done it before, just forgotten how. I've done it on a school computer, created an admin account, and just fucked around with the computer. I changed the cursor on the login screen to a picture of, well, let's just say, a man's reproductive areas. So every time someone turned on the computer and went to the login screen, the cursor would be a penis. <laughs> and I did that through registry editor. Just go and reg edit. And you can just I think it's um I don't know, I think it's current config. No, it's not font system, current control, set control. It's one of these. It's not current config, I think it's the local machine. There's one that allows you to go into control panel. Here it is, this one. Current user. You go control panel. You can go mouse. And you can change the cursor somewhere here. But that doesn't matter. This is just to show you that you can, like, do pretty much anything you want thanks to this little hack so don't forget to enjoy it and hack the school good or the workplace or whatever do whatever you need and still cracked programs or crap don't forget to rate and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching